All right, Jeff, uh, we are live and ready to go when you are. All right, let's do it. Um, hey, everybody, thanks for joining us. I am excited to introduce to you today my friend Jeff Brown. And uh, first of all, I want to welcome you to the five must-haves of an effective podcast opening. Uh, this is a free podcaster training. And before I let Jeff uh, take it away with this uh, fabulous teaching that he's going to be walking us through today, I want to tell you a little bit about how I first met Jeff and uh, why I think uh, you need to be listening to this and why um, you made a wise decision in uh, registering for this webinar. First of all, um, I moved to Nashville uh, about seven years ago, and I moved here um, because I was chasing a girl. I had been corresponding with this uh, young lady named Ashley via uh, handwritten letters that we would mail to each other um, while I spent a year on the road with a band. And all I knew was that I was pretty sure I wanted to marry her and that we hadn't spent much more than two weeks in the same zip code. And so I knew that we probably needed to live near each other before we you know, made the decision to actually get married. So uh, she told me she was moving to Nashville, and so I decided to move to Nashville too. And so I moved here and uh, slept on a friend's couch and basically decided that if I couldn't get a job the first week I was here, I was, I was going to go home and, and live with my parents until I could you know, find a job and find a reason to live here. Anyway, so I started knocking down doors and handing out resumes, and, and I went to this radio station and, and thought, you know, I was probably a shoe-in because here I was having spent a year on the road with a band, having a bachelor's degree in Spanish, of all things. Uh, I thought I was very hireable and that I was the only person with a college degree with a little bit of music experience moving to Nashville. Um, little did I know that there were thousands of people <laughs> with you know, <laughs> much better qualifications than mine. Anyway, that was when I met Jeff, and he interviewed me, and uh, it looked like there was a pretty good chance that I was going to get the job, and then uh, I heard back, I think maybe a few days later, maybe even a week or so, and, and heard that they were going to uh, hire with him. And uh, I was disappointed and uh, you know, eventually did get a job, and everything went well. Uh, after that, but that was you know that was basically it. And then years later, I reconnected with Jeff, and I reminded him of this story. And uh, he said, uh, he said, well, I guess I, I guess I missed out. I should have hired you. <laughs> and I said, no, you shouldn't have, because you know if Jeff hadn't hired, if he, he had hired me, I probably never would have gone and got another job, and probably never would have gone and got all the experience that led me to what I'm doing today. And so I said, I have to thank you for not hiring me. <laughs> no, Jeff, thank you for not hiring me. It's a pleasure to have you. It's so cool to um, have seen you make the transition that you've made from uh, doing radio for 25 plus years to becoming a full-time uh, podcaster, entrepreneur, doing some really cool things online. As somebody who's recently started uh, my own podcast, mm -hmm. I uh, realize how important it is to... Um, you know, learn about these tools that you're using, and and there's not a lot of uh, knowledge out there. There's you know there's there's some good resources out there, but I'm really grateful for your willingness to come and uh, teach us a little bit more about this craft of podcasting. I think that some people are are listening who are like me, who you know maybe writers, maybe into blogging, uh, social media, but they're not quite sure about you know jumping into this foray of uh, you know, audio and and you know, putting your voice out there for the world to hear. And I know you're going to speak to that, but I'm excited about that because for a long time, I, uh, I I was you know I was I didn't know why I I should get a podcast. I didn't really see the value. And having started one earlier this year, I've I've already seen um, the amazing opportunity it provides to share your content in a new way and to connect with your audience uniquely. So Jeff, I'm going to let you take it away. Uh, welcome. Uh, thanks for being willing to do this, and for those of you who are listening, I, I want to let you know that Jeff is basically generously sharing uh, a portion of what's usually a paid course. Um, he's sharing that with us for free today. So we're basically getting free education because uh, he just wants to share this stuff. He wants to be generous, and I told him that I thought there were folks out there who uh, needed some help, uh, as as I do. Well, thank you, Jeff. And and the cool part is, is we're all already getting uh, a number of questions uh, coming in. So. Oh, wow. Uh, we're going we're gonna to get to those a throughout uh, the webinar. We'll try to answer some of those as we go along as opposed to saving everything until the end. So uh, we'll do our best to get to as many of those as we can. Uh, as Jeff mentioned, I've, I've had a 26-year career in radio, and 
Unlike a lot of folks in radio, I've had the opportunity to spend uh, the overwhelming majority of that time at, at a single radio station my last 14 years up until last year uh, at a station Jeff is familiar with. You may be uh, as well if you're in the Nashville area or Middle Tennessee area uh, working at Way FM uh, for 14 years. And I had the chance while here uh, to um, really uh, hone my skills a great deal in large part because for much of my time on the air, I had a talent coach somebody who I met with each and every week who helped me better communicate, get more comfortable behind the microphone, be more confident behind the mic, and more importantly, learn how to leverage this intimate medium called radio, which by extension uh, includes podcasting as, of course, an audio medium. And so um, I, I kind of see myself as, as sort of a talent coach uh, to podcasters, that's how I that's, that's how I view my role and, and what we're gonna what, what we're gonna accomplish here today. Uh, just a real quick, a little bit more about me. I've been happily married to Annie for uh, uh, 12, 13 years now, almost 13 years. Uh, we don't have any kids, uh, but we do consider um, uh, Fritz and Frank our children, <laughs> and they're probably uh, the only two uh, dogs I'm aware of uh, that have been immortalized with their own salt and pepper shaker. Uh, I painted those myself. Pretty, pr pretty proud of that. I'll let you guess which one uh, is salt, which one's pepper. Um, so, uh, the first question is, you know, why should you uh, consider podcasting? Uh, obviously, uh, you're a member of, of Jeff's uh, community, uh, and you understand the importance of blogging. You get blogging, but why should you seriously think about this new medium? Well, I think there are a lot of reasons, uh, not, the, not the least of which is that people are just very, very busy with kids, with school, with staying healthy, with activities, and the great thing is is uh, unlike most forms of content, a podcast can go anywhere uh, and can be listened to while folks are doing uh, and busy doing other things. That's one of the key advantages. I also know, too, uh, that the average attention span continues to dwindle. I, I read a, a recent study, I think it was in Inc. Or, or Fast Company Magazine, Jeff, uh, recently that said the average attention span at the end of last year was just eight seconds. Wow. That's a 33% drop from 2,000 when it was just 12 seconds. And more than that, the same study said that about 17% of page views la last less than four seconds. So that's nearly one in five page views last less than four seconds. Yeah, a lot of people and, hopping around. Yeah, and only 4% of page views last more than 10 seconds. So that's 96% of people view your web pages for less than 10 seconds. But does this mean that we're, we're wasting our time um, blogging? Absolutely not. Blogging is still key uh, in building an audience. In fact, just last week, I was listening to the latest episode of, of Michael Hyatt's podcast, uh, This Is Your Life, and, and he was talking about the 10 reasons every leader needs to have a blog. If you expect to, to lead or have any sort of uh, influence, you should be blogging, hands down. What I am saying, though, is you need to start thinking about how best to diversify your content and how it's being offered uh, and being uh, delivered. Uh, another reason to consider uh, podcasting uh, related to blogging, there are 900 blogs for every one podcast. Uh, that basically means that getting noticed is not as much of an uphill climb uh, as as uh, as as blogging uh, might might seem to be. Uh, Jeff, if you'll hold on just a moment, um, I am. I want to just double check something because I'm 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 seeing some emails come in. Sure. Yeah. About uh, the so if you'll if you'll uh, jump in here real quick, I want to check something just to make sure that we're not having any technical issues. Yeah, no worries. So for those of you who are listening, I was just uh, I was just checking out. Um, it looks like some of the some folks are having some trouble uh, uh, accessing the um, uh, the webinar. So if you're not, um, don't worry about it. If you uh, are, um, I just found out that if you're trying to uh, access it via Firefox, that's um, browsers aren't for some reason. Um, but if not, if uh, you know, if, if you can't access it, or if you know this technical difficulty is um, we can't get it resolved, don't worry. We'll go ahead and record this and send out a, a replay, hopefully to, to all the folks, provided that works. Um, but I do want to I want to sort of testify, take this moment and, and testify to what you know Jeff is saying about podcasting. 
Uh, you know, one of the things that, that I just sort of took for granted was the evolution of media, thinking that everything was moving to video, right? Maybe you've, you've heard this a couple of years ago. Folks were really overemphasizing, um, you know, how big YouTube is going to become. And YouTube is huge, and I'm not saying don't use video. Video is obviously very powerful. Uh, but, you know, as I've recently become a parent and just gotten busier than I thought I would ever be, um, and more distracted, as as Jeff was saying, we're all getting more distracted, and and attention spans are decreasing. Um, what I found I was doing was listening to more audio, audio books, uh, certainly audio podcasts. And what I love about podcasts is it is a medium, it is a message that you can take with you. It's really hard to do that with a video. You can't watch a video while you're traveling somewhere, or you're, maybe when you're stuck in traffic or something. It's really difficult. Plus, load times are higher. It's it's you know, requires more bandwidth. But audio content you can take anywhere with you. You can listen to it at any time while you're doing other things and absorb a lot of the content. And uh, with my message, I, I'm a writer, but I want to get my message out to as many people as possible, regardless of the medium. Podcasting has become something very attractive to me for that reason. I'm able to get uh, my message out to folks, uh, you know, in, in a way that allows them to, um, you know, if they're continuing to be interrupted and distracted, I can still get that message to them in a way that's going to um, hopefully sink in. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate that. Um, you know, another thing to think about too, and I hinted at this before. Uh, you know, each and every one of us is is never more than a few inches away from our smartphones. Your your podcast can go where your listeners do. Now, people can read your blog on the go too. In fact, more and more online content continues to be consumed on mo mobile devices. That's certainly not unique uh, to podcasting. Uh, but unlike uh, blogging, uh, folks can enjoy your podcast, and, and unlike any other form of content. Uh, when they're driving, at the gym, or on the go, uh, they can participate uh, in what you're doing. And the, and the key thing to remember, too, when you think about the stats I shared a moment ago about how intention, attention spans are shrinking, this doesn't seem to impact podcasting. That same person that might spend you know, a couple of minutes on your blog or a couple of minutes watching your video won't think twice about spending you know, 35 minutes with you on their commute to work. So it's really amazing uh, the intimacy of, of, of audio content and the way people view it differently, whether they, whether they realize it or not. Module 1, about 75 or 80 percent of Module 1 of my Podcaster Academy course, as Jeff mentioned, is what we're going to we're going to cover here today. And in essence, it's the five what I consider must-haves or keys uh, to an effective uh, podcast open or, or podcast intro. This is the first 60 to 90 seconds of your podcast. It is as critical, I believe, as your content itself. This is your one opportunity to grab and keep your listeners' attention. And I've got five must-haves that I think help you do that. Now, before we jump into that, I want to uh, ward off a couple of questions that I always get whenever I talk about these five things. One question often is, uh, Jeff, is this something I should be doing every single episode all the time? And the answer to that question is, is yes, because you have to remember that your listener isn't as um, close to the content as you are. It's the curse of knowledge, as Jim Co uh, Collins talks about in the book, Good to Great. So someone may inter be introduced to your podcast for the first time on episode you know, 44, and if you're not doing those same five key things in episode 44 that you did in episodes 1 through 12, let's say, then you're not giving that person the same uh, benefits. You're not welcoming, welcoming them into the party and introducing them around, so to speak. So yes, you do need to continue to do these things each and every episode. And the next question usually becomes, well then, doesn't that get kind of boring? What about for the returning listener, the person that comes back again and again and again? Uh, and the answer to that is, if you're doing exactly the same five things exactly the same five ways, then yes, that does get a little monotonous. But uh, in this case, what I teach is to uh, alter and shift the way those things are executed. You're still accomplishing the same goals with each one of them, but we're changing them up from week to week by doing it the way I'm going to describe. And one of the things that helps with is uh, freshening your open up each week each uh, time you release a new episode, whether that's a weekly podcast or whatever, you're changing it up so that it's fresh and new, even for that returning listener who comes back uh, again and again. 
And these five key things, you've probably seen this acronym before, these five must-haves help answer the question that is first and foremost in the minds of your listener. I, I put the dash in there because I'm a dork and I think it makes it look like radio station call letters, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> but, but as you're probably used to seeing it, it's, it's simply W-I-I-F-M, what's in it for me? Jeff, you probably tackled this before on your blog, I'm sure, uh, when it when it comes to writing a, a decent bl uh, blog post. Is that safe to say? Yeah, you know, this is um, this is this is this is the question that people ask uh, uh, implicitly when they ask you what a book is about, too. And I think this I, I didn't really think of this with the podcast, but but it's totally true. People have started to ask me when I tell people, oh, I'm, I'm a podcaster now, which is something I'm you know sort of excited about saying. Uh, they'll go, okay, what's your podcast about? But what they're not really saying that. They're saying, what's in it for me? What am I going to get out of this if I spend 20, 30, 40, 50, however many minutes you know, is the investment? If I spend that much time listening to you, uh, what am I going to get out of this? How is this going to be worth my time? So totally. Yeah, and this, this question, yeah, again, it's first and foremost. Oftentimes, your listener's not even aware of it, and, and you do the same thing whether you realize it or not whenever you engage and new content. Your, your job as the podcaster is to, as quickly as you can, answer this overarching question. So, your show open, your intro, uh, must-haves uh, that we're going to talk about today are must-haves because they help answer this question in the mind of your listener, each in their own unique way. And I've actually uh, taken uh, this acronym, What's In It For Me, and used each letter to help you remember the five must-haves of your podcast open. So we'll think of them like this. The W stands for worldview, and that helps answer a secondary question, which is why should I care? Uh, the I in what's in it for me stands for information, the first one at least, and that, that helps answer the question, the secondary question, what am I listening to? The other I is influence, and that's who are you exactly? Foreshadowing, what am I in for? Meet, or what I sometimes call motivation. I use those words interchangeably. And that's, will I be moved to act? Will I be moved to take action? Now, the only flaw in this acronym, uh, W-I-I-F-M, that we're using here to remember our five things is that this is not exactly the order that the five things come in your podcast. That looks just a little bit different. In fact, it looks like this. Information is first, influence, motivation, worldview, and foreshadowing, and then the words there in the parentheses, just another name for what these things mean. And we're going to break down each one of them one at a time. All right, starting with information. And this of the five is the easily the, the most basic of the five. It helps answer the secondary question in the mind of your listener. <clears throat> excuse me. What am I listening to? It should always be the first thing to hear. It's simply you know, programming courtesy. I've heard some podcasters argue against having this information at the front of their podcast. They want to have, you know, 30 seconds of theme music and bells and whistles and, and have all sorts of fun. Uh, that just doesn't work. You have to remember how people consume podcasts. They're on the go. Their phone is not necessarily in front of them. They're not looking at the screen. They're using their, their favorite app that pulls it up automatically right after the previous podcast ends. They don't know what's coming next, so you need to tell them and tell it to them immediately. If they're driving, if they're uh, running on the treadmill uh, or doing chores around the house, they shouldn't have to uh, actively have to go after this information. You need to tell it to them audibly at the, at the very beginning of your podcast. It sounds simple, but so many podcasters don't do that. And secondarily, it gives you an excuse or a reason uh, or a way to shorten your podcast's URL. I won't go into all the detail about that right now, but suffice it to say that at the end of my podcast episodes, using my WordPress blog and a, and, and a special plugin, I can share with my listeners uh, you know, find all the sh all the the links and the resources and other things we talked about on today's episode by uh, simply visiting readtoleadpodcast.com slash 44 for episode 44 rather than, you know, readtoleadpodcast.com slash uh, episode 44 slash Simon Sinek slash Leaders Eat Lash slash Jeff Brown slash whatever, whatever, whatever. It gives you a, a, a built-in excuse and way to shorten that and make it easy to remember uh, for your listeners. Sometimes podcasters will use the name of their guest if they have guests, but of course names can be spelt all sorts of different ways and so that, that becomes difficult. So remember your, your show name and the episode number at the very beginning of every single episode. All right, 
Number two, the second I. This is influence, and this helps answer the secondary question, who are you exactly? And stated another way, uh, this is social proof for your podcast. Now, as a newcomer to your podcast, I want to know how others see you. You know, radio stations, if you still listen to the radio people, uh, many of you probably don't, but if you've <laughs> listened to radio recently or any time in your life, you know that radio stations use this all the time. And, and, and we do it everywhere else online in, in, in any form that we can because it tells people that we're worth listening to. A radio station oftentimes will have listeners uh, in between songs talking about what they love about the radio station. You don't know who those people are, but the fact that they vouch for the radio station speaks to you. And I think it's important that at the beginning of your podcast, you take a moment to use an endorsement or a testimonial from someone who can vouch for you. Now, if this is someone well-known, that's all the better, but it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, a name that everybody knows. Now, in the case of my podcast, I'll give you just a couple of examples. Um, I have on um, on the Read to Lead podcast, I bring on authors. Jeff's been a guest on my show. I talk to a non, uh, or rather, uh, yeah, nonfiction and business book authors about their latest book and, and their unique insights on leadership, personal development, career, marketing, entrepreneurship, uh, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and so what I do is I make sure I do not leave this to chance, and I suggest you do the same thing. When you have someone giving you a testimonial or offering you an endorsement, feel free to write it out for them. Don't leave it to them to, to come up with on their own. So uh, one of the times I had Chris Brogan on my show, I said, hey, Chris, would you, would you, mind, would you mind reading this for me? He said, absolutely, don't mind at all. And I, I try to get creative with it as well. I try to go the extra mile and not just have him or whoever read something that anybody could, could say. It has to be unique to the person, especially if it's somebody who's been a guest on your show, especially if it's somebody that's well-known. So Chris says, hi, I'm Chris Brogan, author of The Freak Shall Inherit the Earth. And the good news is you're well on your way because only a freak would listen to this. It's the Read to Lead <laughs> podcast with Jeff Brown. And, and, and that's something that, that is memorable to Chris. And, and, and he knows that I've gone to a little bit of extra effort to write that just for him. Uh, another quick example, August Turek on my show recently, uh, late last year, author of Business Secrets of the Trappist Monks, and you found one of the best kept secrets on the internet. It's the Read to Lead podcast, et cetera, et cetera. So I think doing this goes a long way to tell people who don't know you, who are trying you out for the first time, uh, that, that you're worth the effort, that someone else feels that way, and that they may as well. Uh, Jeff, uh, I don't know. Your podcast is so new. Is this something that you've incorporated in the life of your podcast yet? This is a great question. So I'm taking notes because I'm learning, you know, all the things that I didn't do because I didn't have any sort of uh, uh, training like this. Um, so I want to say two things. Uh, first of all, um, I think people don't understand how influence works. I love that you said that you wrote that out for Chris, that you didn't just wait for some influencer to come and endorse you, and you have landed some, you know, great interviews with very influential people. I don't know who that Jeff guy you were talking about was, but you know, some <laughs> of the other ones are solid. Uh, and still, you have to ask. And I think uh, people don't understand this about books, that when you're getting endorsements for books, uh, a lot of them, over half, sometimes 9 out of 10, you're writing, you as the author are writing those endorsements for those endorsers, or at least giving, you know, getting it started so that they can then put it into their own words. And I, I share that because I think people misunderstand influence. They think that this is something that you sort of wait around for somebody to say, hey, you're doing a great job, and I'm going to tell everybody about it. And they don't understand that you have to take the initiative and do the hard work, and I think you've you know, demonstrated that, Jeff. So that was the first thing I wanted to say, um, that that works in writing, and it certainly works here, and I just think it works with influence in general. You have to do the work for them. You have to make it easy for somebody to endorse you, put your, your name out there, that sort of thing. Uh, secondly, no, I haven't done this, but now that you're telling me to do it, I'm go going to get started. <laughs> uh, Nancy okay. wants to know, uh, is it important to have an intro uh, with music and, and, and a vocal intro like a radio show? The, the, that's not an absolute must. I think it adds some personality uh, to your intro, and I utilize a, a music theme, uh, and these can be purchased a number of different ways. You want to make sure you're licensing what you're using uh, for sure. I use a site called uh, Music Bakery, uh, musicbakery.com, and for about 30 or 40 bucks, uh, I can purchase uh, you know, a 60-second theme that I use at the beginning and at the end of my, of my podcast. 
uh, and then uh, I tapped a friend of mine named Joy who who does a voiceover for me at the beginning and the end as well. Uh, but that's not absolutely uh, necessary. I think both add some personality, but not an absolute uh, must. All right, um, those are the first two. We talked about the two eyes, influence and information. Uh, now we move on to the third one, which I called meat earlier, but I sometimes interchangeably use the word motivation. And, and, and this is, will I be moved uh, to act? And so this is very simply a moment in your conversation, and your guest, if you have them, that is copied and lifted from the chat and pasted near the beginning of your episode, right after uh, information and influence. And uh, probably if you're using a music bed like uh, or a music intro like Nancy asked, it would be over the beginning of that. Now this is optimally 8 to 12 seconds, you know, say 10 uh, would be a good amount of length. It's a single complete thought. Uh, in other words, taken out of context, it has to make complete sense and stand on, on its own. Preferably it's something you know rather profound and I think too that that adds a layer of professionalism uh, to your show and variety to your show because this element is changing each and every week just like the last one uh, that we talked about and it brings a unique element to your show uh, every time. Now many of her, I've heard do this, there's not very many people that are doing this and this is one of those things that really can separate your podcast from all the others out there, make it sound more compelling, more interesting, more relevant. So few do this and those that do often go way, 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 way too long. I've heard uh, uh, some podcasts take you know a 45 second clip or a minute long clip and that, that's just too much it needs to be a more teaser like about about 10 seconds in length is a great link I want to show you some examples of what I'm talking about in uh, episode one the very first episode of my podcast Dan Miller author was on the show and he said if it ever becomes clear that I've stopped learning dig a hole and push me in because I'm of no use to anybody now that to me was very very powerful and 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 you know Dan's basically asking the question uh, or saying basically you know I don't care who you are you should always be striving uh, to learn new things and if, if, if you're not continually learning uh, then then what are you living for now when you hear that uh, you're probably in, in one of two camps when you hear a statement that's profound that that way you're, you're often not indifferent to it uh, you're either in total agreement you know saying something along the lines of, of preach it Dan or you may be challenged in thinking, you know, uh, he's so right, I've not really thought about it that way, I need to get busy. You might even be thinking, well, that's a load of crap. <laughs> I, don't, I don't agree with that. But uh, there's a, not much likelihood, it's not very likely that you're going to hear that and be indifferent about it. So it's almost like it's asking you to, to pick one side or the other. I'm going to get into more detail about why that's important here in just a second, but let's look at a couple of more. Uh, this is from uh, Kimberly Palmer on episode 29 of my podcast. And she says, everyone needs to have a secondary income on top of their full-time jobs. It's really the only way to live today to have any semblance of financial security. Now, this is another one of those pr profound statements that you probably, when you hear it, you agree with it uh, wholeheartedly because you're like, yeah, I always feel like I'm you know, one step closer to, to a pink slip every day I go into work. Or you disagree with it and you're thinking, what, we all need two, three jobs? Now, what are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> when, when is enough enough, you know? Uh, and I think it's important to establish this at the very front of your podcast to let folks know that what they're about to hear is either, and this is what your, your podcast, the, the purpose your podcast needs to serve, if they agree with the statement they've just heard, they're likely to stick around and continue listening to your podcast because they want to hear their own beliefs affirmed. If they disagree or aren't sure, about what they've just heard from your guest or whoever it is saying this profound statement, then they're likely to stick around because they want to hear your beliefs or your guest's beliefs defended. Uh, and again, they're profound statements so that your listener is not likely to have an indifferent attitude toward it. It's almost like you're drawing a line in the sand and taking your listener by the hand and daring them to go on this journey with you when you, when you pull the right statement from your conversation. Uh, one more real quick came from, from our host, Jeff, who says, I, I think uh, that we know intuitively what we're supposed to be doing with our lives, even if it's kind of like a vague notion, but we're afraid to admit it. Again, a profound statement from your conversation, just 10 seconds in length, that encourages your listener to go on this journey with you or dares them to, whether they agree with the statement or not.
So, Jeff, I want I want to jump in here just to make sure I'm, I cl uh, clarify w what what you're saying here. So, again, we're talking about how we immediately grab the attention of a listener through the first segment of the podcast, for, through the first you know introduction, open, uh, and and what you're talking about is having something motivating in 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 there, uh, and you're using quotes from uh, interview guests. Uh, just sort of to hook people, you know, s s sort of like uh, I like that these are worldview statements that you either agree with mm -hmm. them or you don't. You're gonna keep listening to, you know, prove that you're right or or that they're wrong or or you know be persuaded, you know, uh, otherwise. Um, th is that right? This this goes at the beginning. This is just a little soundbite that you're pulling out of the interview to to get people to listen to the rest of the thing, right? Exactly right, yeah. So you've got the information, just that little piece where you're saying your, your podcast name, the episode number, then you've got that endorsement or testimonial, and those are usually, if you're using a music theme, those are, 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 are done what we call in the radio business dry, so nothing underneath them. Then your music theme starts, and a few five, six, seven seconds into that music theme, if you're using one, then we hear this worldview statement from your guest. That so, again stands on its own. So Jeff, I wanted to jump in again because I, I think what we're touching on here is, you know, the way that you open the podcast is in many ways, um, you know, like you're setting expectation for what's to come. And I like that that in this "What's in it for me" acronym, where we're spelling spelling out each each letter with a, you know different uh, idea that's gonna kind of create the theme for the open. It's also the theme for the show, and, and I think that um, you know what what we're putting together here is is a formula for what it takes to have a really you know, powerful three-dimensional podcast where there's interaction with the audience. There's stuff that's going to move them to act. Um, I, so I think that's great. I just wanted to point that out. Um, I also wanted to ask you. So you're pulling out these great sound bites from uh, interviewees, and uh, I wanted to know, like, do you, because this is an important part of hooking the listener at the beginning, do you plant any of those seeds in your guest, or do you just expect them to come? How do you get these sound bites? No, I, I don't plant them. Um, I, well, uh, unless you're you're referring to you know me asking hopefully what is uh, uh, quality questions of my guests, and so if I've done my due diligence there in asking great questions, and I'll direct my questions based on the, on the things that fascinate me in my reading, and that usually will elicit the kind of of sound bite that I'm looking for. But I always I won't always know it when I hear it though either. I'm in the I'm in the you know, sort of engrossed in the conversation and and and, and listening to, to what they're saying, but then also thinking you know, from time to time, you know, what am I going to say next, and what am I going to follow up with? Or he just said something I wasn't expecting, so let me tackle that. And then as I make that uh, uh, first pass, uh, uh, as I go back to edit it, and I make that first pass and listening through, I'm just editing out ahs and ums and taking out yeah. things that don't belong. Then I make a second pass, and that second pass, I'm listening just for this nugget that I'm going to pull out. You know who does a good job of, of this in the middle of his show uh, is uh, John Lee Dumas. Um, mm. when, when he interviewed me, um, and he's got a, a great uh, podcast called Entrepreneur on Fire, um, when I would say something kind of like this, and he would immediately recognize that soundbite, and he would like reiterate it for his guests as if to say, guys, this is important. I want you to take note of this. Write this down. Go do this. Whatever. Um, it was really affirming as the guest to feel like everything I was saying, you know, was <laughs> genius or something. But I liked what he was doing by not just interviewing the the guest, but again, you know, going back to this, well, what's in it for me? Question. Mm. He was helping his listeners understand that the the questions that I was asking that there was action associated with those those answers. When he was asking me questions and I was giving answers, that uh, that wasn't just my experience. That there were things that his audience could glean from that if they chose to do it, and he was intentionally highlighting a few of those those action steps. I know we're just talking about the podcast open here, but I think that you know, in terms of the whole show, uh, again, this this question of what's in it for me applies to um, all of it, and I love that. Uh, much like with writing, that you want to put as much of your good stuff at the beginning, uh, sort of as a teaser for what's to come. You're doing the same thing uh, with a podcast. Absolutely, uh, and you mentioned worldview a moment ago. Uh, that's that's next up, and this is actually uh, a statement that is initiated by you. It may not be delivered by you. In fact, I have my voiceover gal Joy say this on my behalf. But this is, in essence, uh, the reason why you do what you do. Um, you know, I, I don't want. I don't want. 
getting some feedback there. Is that on your end, Jeff? Sorry. No, I'm I'm muting some folks. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that. Uh, this is essentially the um, uh, why you do what you do, why you do your podcast, and helps answer the secondary question again, why should I care? Your listeners should wholeheartedly agree or feel challenged by your worldview statement, much like we talked about with the last element. Uh, in other words, they hear it and they think, oh my gosh, that's that's where I'm at right now. i got to listen. Or they hear it and they think, man, I've never really thought about it like that. I don't know if I agree with that. Uh, a consultant once told me that the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. And so the idea behind uh, this last element where we talked about um, uh, you know, pulling out that motivation, uh, motivational statement from your guest and this element, your worldview, why should I care, uh, it's very, very difficult for the person to hear these things and, be, again, be indifferent about them. They're likely to take one side or the other, but they continue listening regardless of which side they're on because they either want to hear their beliefs affirmed or, or hear yours defended. Uh, a quick, uh, uh, on a side, a radio story going back uh, 20 years ago uh, to uh, my early days in radio. And a guy who was very popular at the time named Rush Limbaugh. And he was a very um, uh, divisive sort of person <laughs> on the air. Uh, as, you, as you might imagine, you may, may, may well know that. But uh, uh, b back in the day, the way radio stations were rated via Arbitron is we uh, people uh, got like a thousand random people would get this physical booklet in the mail, a little diary, and they would handwrite in what stations they listened to that day or that week. And they can also comment on the things that they liked or didn't like. And, and as the legend goes, in various markets, uh, Arbitron would get those back, and you know the, the most often mentioned comment would be, I love Rush Limbaugh. But the number two most mentioned comment would be something along the lines of, I hate Rush Limbaugh. Or in another market, it might be switched. It might be number one was, I can't stand the guy. Number two is, I love the guy. The point is, is, is what he did on the air created uh, these two camps. And even those who didn't care for Rush often listened to Rush. Now, again, I'm not suggesting that, that you, you, you cause people to, you know, to hate you. That's not what we're, what we're talking about here. But it's very much about expecting you now to defend what you've said. Take me by the hand and dare me to go on this journey. Uh, so for me, um, my worldview statement for my podcast began very simply, I believe reading is important. But that wasn't quite compelling enough. Your worldview statement has to be very, very compelling. And so I kept asking myself that question over and over and over and over again. Why you do the podcast? Why are you doing the podcast? And so I think reading is important. Uh, grew and got more specific and more specific and more specific as I went along until finally when I was ready to launch, my worldview statement became I believe consistent and intentional reading is important, or rather is key, to success in, in business and in life. Now, I know that I have a solid and emphatically stated worldview statement when I look at the inverse of the statement. So put another way, uh, what, I'm, what I'm basically saying is, is, is if you don't do this, you won't succeed. If you don't do these things, uh, you will fail. Um, and I actually have, uh, again, my voice over gal, Joy, state this on my behalf. Now, whether it's you saying it or whether it's someone else saying it for you, you must uh, consider how important it is for you to approach that statement from the uh, camera angle of the listener. So, in my case, I don't say it exactly as you see here. I have Joyce say it like this. She says, Jeff believes that if you desire true success in business and in life, then intentional and consistent reading is a must. So it isn't just about what Jeff believes, but it's that Jeff believes that if you want these things, then here's what you need to do to, to reach them. Okay, so it's very important uh, that you understand that very, very subtle difference and, and talk about it and share it from the camera angle of the listener in a way that's relevant uh, and compelling to them. And, uh, you know, if, if, if this is something that doesn't come naturally to you, something like a simple template, a simple fill-in-the-blank may help you with this. You don't have to follow this format exactly. Uh, but, but, but as a way to get started, you can simply start with, I believe that, fill-in-the-blank. X or doing X is fill-in-the-blank. Two or four, fill-in-the-blank. In this and or that. And then think about what does the inverse of your worldview statement imply uh, and, and you'll know if it's emphatic enough when you look at it from both sides.
Jeff, anything you want to add to that? No, I love that. I mean, we, we uh, walk people through a similar process in, in my uh, course, and I love the, uh, the concept of a worldview. I think it's what makes for a really powerful message. And when, you're, when you feel like you don't know what you're doing, it's probably because you don't know why you're doing it. And yeah. um, knowing that, as, as you said, and constantly revisiting that reason for sharing your message is really, really important. So I'm glad that you highlighted it. A lot of folks say, well, you know, being this upfront about why I'm doing what I'm doing or, or pulling that uh, that uh, uh, that profound statement from, I guess, those things scare me because I'm, I'm afraid that, that it's going to drive people away. The reality is, is if, if your podcast is done well, if these five elements are done well, your podcast is not going to be for everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I sort of subscribe to the Simon Sinek way of, of thinking. Now, we all want as many listeners to our podcast as possible, as many readers to our blog as possible. Uh, but one of the things Simon said in his, his Start With Why uh, TED Talk was something along the, the lines of, your goal isn't to do business with everyone who needs what you have. Your goal is to do business with those who believe what you believe. And I think that uh, doing these five elements and doing them well uh, in laser-like focus is really going to have a counterintuitive, a counterintuitive effect. I think it's going to draw people. You're going to be more interesting uh, to listen to because you've been so emphatic which each, with each of these uh, uh, elements that we're talking about. All right, the last of the five is uh, foreshadowing, and, and that's just basically what's coming up, what am I in for, what's around the corner, and this is you very succinctly and consistently teasing what you or your guest are going to be sharing in the episode. I think it's important, too. Oftentimes I hear podcasters begin uh, kind of talking about what they're going to be talking about, and uh, they refer to everything in the past, tense because you know this interview's already happened if it's an interview podcast you're doing uh, this interview's already taken place and so they, they they use words that 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 remind everybody this has already happened you weren't there uh, this is a recording you're about to hear but i think it's important that you treat it as if it's in the future or, j- or right now it's it's going to happen in just a moment even though your listener is coming to this after the fact because as far as i'm concerned i'm listening right now i'm in my car right now i'm here now you're here now your guest is here now quit reminding me that it's not now and taking me out of the intimacy of this medium so just a a, qu- a quick aside there so foreshadowing is it's very essence it's, it's simply three takeaways i think it's important to just stick with Three, what I want to hear you giving me every single time in the beginning of your podcast is three of the takeaways that I, as a listener, am going to walk away with. So give me a hint of what's to come. Uh, and, and many podcasters at this point are like, well, gee, Jeff, I write the questions, then I do the interview, then I have to go back to the interview and figure out what the takeaways were. Who has the time for all this? Well, it's, it's actually a lot easier than most people make it. I think it's just a matter of, if you're in an interview-type setting especially, is simply taking the questions you've written and, and, and re, uh, rephrasing them, excuse me, as statements. And so, if I'm talking to uh, to Jeff or to Simon Sinek or whoever, and I ask, you know, uh, why should we uh, implement X, Y, and Z in our lives? Then my takeaway might sound like, you know, Simon today will share why you should implement X, Y, Z into your life. Same thing with how you can or the X rules for under, you know, these are like really nice, succinct, powerful blog titles and is in essence what they are. It's taking questions you've asked and rephrasing them as statements uh, and, and just choose your, th- your three, you know, strongest ones uh, and, and, and do point one, point two, point three or, you know, point one, point two, point three and a whole lot more. All right. Um, just to review those real quick, open uh, the five must-haves of an effective podcast open. Information is number one. That's the name and episode number of your podcast. Influence, that's your endorsement or your social proof. It doesn't have to be some, from someone well-known. I have a former student who does a homeschooling podcast, and she says, how is this going to work for me? Uh, and I said, well, who's your podcast for? Well, it's for parents. Obviously, it's a homeschooling podcast and their children. And so uh, she now is getting um, uh, endorsements, testimonials from her clients, from parents. And I said, take that a step further and consider getting them from the children as well. And, and, and this is a lot easier to do with kids than, than most people realize. I've done this a lot in radio. And with children, it's just a matter of feeding them a line at a time, just a line at a time in a setting where you can record it. And if, and if that's not possible, then using an app like uh, or a plug-in for your blog or the website Speak Pipe, Speak What I'm Doing Now Pipe, like put it in your pipe and smoke it, speakpipe.com, 
you can easily set up on your blog or simply send people to your SpeakPipe page and from their from their computer from the comfort of their own home you know if getting in front of a microphone makes them nervous or what have you they they can leave you a testimonial something scripted or something from the heart either way motivation or meet again that's the profound statement 10 seconds preferably your worldview that's why you do it and then the foreshadowing or the three takeaways uh, now uh, let me just jump in here and ask if there's anything, uh, Jeff, that you want to ask, any any questions you want to toss out. Sure. Well, I, I know we're you know we've still got some ways to go, uh, but I uh, I wanted to sort of begin at at the question that I think a lot of people listening that that I still am trying to figure out, and this this has really helped me um, um, figure out how to be more specific with my own podcast. I just saw on on Twitter uh, Jody Mayberry who has a really cool podcast for um, park rangers. You know, people working in, yeah. in like the state park system. He said, "Well, I felt great about my podcast until until I listened to Jeff Brown. Now I know I have a lot of work to do." <laughs> and I feel the same way, but it's a good it's a good <laughs> kind of good kind of depressed that you're making us feel. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when I was listening to this, I thought Wow, this is very similar to the process that you go through when you write a book in terms of not only how you open and hook people, but answering the question, what is it about? Again, I can't get away from this idea of asking, what's in it for me? How do you have uh, not only some profound statements that are motivating for the listener, uh, you've got social proof for it, you know, people that are saying, hey, this is worth listening to, and then a specific worldview behind it. You also have some very clear takeaways about what to expect. Uh, it very much follows the process of you know, writing a book, which tells me that these are principles not just for podcasting, but for how to communicate an effective message. What I wanted to ask you, and, and maybe suggest that maybe some of this is partly the answer, is before somebody knows you know, what you, this process or begins to walk through this process, I, I think they think that they need to know what their podcast is going to be about. Um, how, do you, how do you figure that out? Do you just start? Do you walk through this process? And this kind of helps you because you're going to open every episode with this. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we're going to get to that in a second, you know, I can, I can sort of shut up. But oh, that's fine. No, no. I think that's a question. That, that's something that I'm wondering, and I think other people are wondering too. If I... If I want to do a podcast, uh, what should it be about? How do I figure that out? Yeah, and I think there can be an ebb and flow to it as well. I know for me personally, I can speak from my own personal experiences. I kicked around, Jeff, the idea of doing a podcast for like, uh, gosh, five years. Yeah, um, I did too. It was a long time. And I never really felt like I, I fell upon the right idea, and that was the main reason why. Uh, I, I never launched one at the time, you know, back in 2008, 2009. I thought, well, what would I do a podcast about? I really hadn't landed on anything. And it wasn't until about uh, March or so of last year when I was just driving home one day and I listened to audiobooks and podcasts all the time. And um, I had set a, a pretty lofty goal for how many books I was going to read uh, each uh, month in the year. And I'd set a, just a, well, I say a lofty goal. It was a simple one for me at the time, but a book a month. And I got to the end of March and I realized... I'd read almost 12 books in, in that time instead of you know three, one a month. And, and when, I, when I realized that, I said out loud in the car, wow, that's like a book a week. And when I said that, that spoke podcast to me. I realized here was something I was loving doing, that's reading business books, nonfiction books, people from the likes of you. I loved doing that as much as anything else uh, th that I could do. I loved sharing what I w was learning with other people. As soon as I would learn it, I wanted to go share it. I wanted to go uh, chat with somebody over coffee and let them know what I was discovering in these books that I was reading. And I realized that if I could maintain that pace of reading a book a week, <laughs> that there was a podcast there, that I could take this love, this thing that I could not do, and share it with other people who might also love it as much as I do. And so I, I guess that's where I would begin. But know, too, that um, even once you start, being having the radio background that I did, I thought, oh, this is going to be perfect from the very first day because I know equipment and I know this and I know that, and I've interviewed thousands of people. But, you know, the first dozen or so episodes of my, my podcast were a constant ebb and flow. There are things I'm doing now that I wish I'd done from the very beginning that I just didn't do. There are uh, just uh, small things, too, like, you know, three questions, uh, for example, that I ask every guest. Of course, we talk about their latest book, and so the get, uh, the uh, questions are specific and unique in that way, but there's also three questions at the end that I ask of everyone. Well, when I had you on episode four, I wasn't really doing that, and so, you know, mine has morphed along the way, 
uh, and I think gotten better too. But it didn't, you know, in other words, it didn't have to be perfect from the get go. And it, for me, it was really about finding something that I couldn't not talk about, whether it was something that you know uh, uh, paid me in some way or not. I was going to uh, going to do this. Hmm. Well, that's really interesting. So I mean, basically, you're saying you stalled for a while, and then you know, once you got a decent idea, you started, but it took shape as it went on. And I just I, I know that this is about you know how to open the podcast, but I also think that we're touching on the, you know the meat of of every podcast, which I, again I know that we're gonna um, get to more in a second. But I just love th this idea of if you don't really know what your podcast should be about, maybe ask yourself these five questions. You know, what's the information that you want to get across? Uh, who, you know, who do you think, uh, who, who do you want this to influence or, or who could endorse this? You know, in other words, what's like the genre? Um, you know, like what are you going to motivate people to do? Why do you want to do it? You know, regardless of any sort of uh, compensation or attention or lack thereof, what's the reason that you're going to do this? And as you said, it was something that you couldn't not do, which I yeah. love Love that, uh, you know, double negative included. <laughs> what are the takeaways that you're going to give people? Like, why yeah. is it going to be valuable for them? Yeah. Um, I just think those are really great questions to ask. If you're not sure what your podcast is going to be about, maybe start there. Uh, I'll touch on a couple of questions here that I've seen come in. And by the way, in case you haven't noticed this already, just below the video is a place where you can enter your email address or your name and uh, plug in a question, hit submit, and we'll get to as many of these uh, as we can. Uh, but I just want to answer a couple that were relevant to what we were, some of the things we were just talking about. Um, is the quote, uh, that motivation element I talked about where you're lifting uh, a portion of something your guest says to the front that she uh, she wants to know, or rather he, Butch, wants to know, is that an actual audio soundbite from the interview or the host just reading the quote? That is an actual soundbite. Just to clear up any confusion, there's that moment toward the beginning of the podcast where, uh, if we take mine as an example, where, uh, say, Chris Brogan is endorsing me and my podcast and why you should listen. That's often uh, uh, comes in from the person who was my guest last week. You know, that's, that's often who I'll put there. It's whoever my guest was last week will say that uh, uh, influence or social proof for my podcast. Then I've got my music intro, and immediately, or about five or six seconds in, I'm dropping in that profound statement that I've lifted from the conversation, whether that's me, me and my co-host, or my guest. If you do have guests, then I think it should be your guest, where I've taken that 10-second snippet, pulled it to the front just to grab your attention, and then that's followed by, uh, element four, that's the worldview. That's you sharing why you do what you do. None of us as podcasters have any problem, really, once we're, once we're ready to launch in, in remembering to tell people at the beginning what our podcast is about. That's a totally natural thing to do. It's just instinctive. We need to tell people what this is about. But rarely do I hear podcasters telling listeners why they do it and getting that buy-in. Because, again, to quote Simon Sinek again, people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. I know I'm speaking to the choir when it comes to Jeff on that one. Um, let's see, what else? Um, can you show that um, worldview statement template again? Anne wants to know. Anne, if you'll email me, uh, info at podcasteracademy.com, info at podcasteracademy.com, I can send that to you, but I will show it to you as well. Hey, Jeff, I got an idea uh, yep. for you about that, um, and, and if we need to keep moving, um, feel free to do that, uh, but you know what would be cool is if we could you know, maybe uh, create that as a download for everybody who registered for the uh, webinar, we could you know, oh, send sure, that out sure. via email you know, as yeah. like a PDF or something, and then you could just export that slide or maybe yeah, absolutely. a little, little worksheet. I think that's... I was looking at that, and I teach people how to write for a worldview, and I was like, hey, I kind of want to steal that as a writing <laughs> exercise, so that's <laughs> great. Uh, another person asks, uh, Barb wants to know, what, uh, where can I get podcast cover art that isn't too expensive? Uh, well, it, it depends on your definition of expensive, but um, I got mine at 99designs. Um, uh, that's about a $300 proposition, but if that's too expensive, you could consider a place like uh, Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. Uh, and certainly, uh, don't hesitate to, in fact, I was at a pod camp uh, here in Nashville, an unconference here on Saturday, and I was throwing out these two options, and somebody else said, "Hey, hey, check your friends on Facebook. Uh, oftentimes, there are friends in, in, in your in your own uh, sphere of influence who do this kind of thing. Will do it really cheap, uh, or sometimes even even for free." Okay. Any other questions, Jeff? From you? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. I'm good for now. 
Well, um, uh, continue to uh, feel free to plug away at questions if you have them because we want to get to as many as we can. But if you're sitting in front of your computer, you're on this webinar, then you know that becoming a more confident, uh, natural, and engaging host, which is what I try to teach, is going to you know, increase your potential for subscriptions and for downloads. We want you know, more people listening, ultimately, right? just like we want more people reading our blog. Well, that's, that's why I've created... Uh, the Podcaster Academy course. You're seeing again about 75 or 80 percent of what is module one uh, uh, from the course. Uh, the reason I think, uh, and, and I want to ask you to consider uh, going deeper if you like what you've seen so far, the reason I think you should consider taking the class is because I'll personally teach you how to sound like a pro. Yes, that's possible. Generate more engagement and ultimately Again, build your audience. So if you're just starting out and would like to have the best podcast launch possible, then I think something like Podcaster Academy, again, if you want to go deeper, is for you. If you're a podcaster who wants to grow your audience and see more engagement, this is for you. Or if you already have a podcast, you're seeing thousands of downloads, but would like to take it up another level, uh, this is for you. Jeff, I know you've had a chance to... Um, a view, uh, get a little bit of insight of, of Podcaster Academy, have, having seen this module in its entirety and, and maybe some of the others. Yeah, yeah, I've gone through it and I, um, I, I recommend it, I endorse it. Uh, you know, as I said, I, I'm, I've been trying to start applying this to my own podcast and like you, Jeff, I kind of had a messy start and I didn't know what I didn't mm. know, um, but I have to tell you that... Um, uh, I had no idea what I was missing out on in terms of not having a, a podcast. And you know, if if you have a message that you want the world to hear, and you're you're like me, and you go, ah, like I have kind of a dorky voice, and sometimes my voice cracks. Uh, that doesn't matter. What matters is that you're getting your message out there. And uh, you know, the bottom line is what was true for blogs. I don't know when I got started six, seven years ago is even more true for uh, podcasting now now which is to say that there aren't a lot of people doing it you know a relatively small amount of people doing it even uh, with it seems like you know so many people starting new podcasts um, it, it is like I can't remember like the ratio is like nine to one blogs to podcasts so if you just have a message that you want the world to hear uh, having a podcast I I just I think is is a great uh, strategy for um, you know sharing your voice with the world it's free you know or very very cheap and I don't know of anybody this is why I asked you to do this Jeff I don't know of anybody with your experience with more experience than uh, 26 years of uh, working in professional radio I know a lot of people with laptops who you know speak into their you know microphones and, and put them on iTunes uh, but you're coming from uh, you know a legitimate uh, nationally syndicated uh, radio show um, and you've been on both sides you've been the host as well as the producer I know you've worn a lot of hats uh, this is why I like being friends with you I feel like you know, you, you know so much uh, about radio and you've translated all that information to podcasting which in many ways you know is competing if not replacing you know some of the functions that radio served you've told me this you know you've told me that if somebody wants to get a job in radio they need to start a podcast mm -hmm. now and I think you know what's even more true is if you have a message that you want the world to hear um, if you don't already have a podcast you need one and if you have a podcast and it's not reaching the people that it needs to reach um, I love these steps that you laid out for us so generously Jeff and you know it would take us what days probably to go through all of the content that you have to share with us I think you've been really generous in, in giving away basically the first module of your course for free so if you guys are listening and you want more uh, of this sort of thing um, you know I would encourage you to sign up for Podcaster Academy I'm a member uh, this is not just a bunch of um, you know content that you consume Jeff literally walks you through the process and, and can even coach you if that's you know the kind of help that you want so uh, I'm a fan uh, Jeff has uh, started speaking into my podcast and I am doing everything that he says mm -hmm. and um, I, I suggest you do the same yeah and it really is, is cool when you consider that that you know the gatekeepers no longer hold the keys when I started in radio and 
I'm going to date myself here, 1987, you know, I had to, I had to get the good graces of somebody who was willing to hire me to do that. And, and while that still holds true for many professions, you know, I had a friend uh, of mine come to me a couple of years ago, a year and a half ago, and say, I, I want to start a radio show, Jeff. How would I go about getting on the radio? How would I get it on your station on Way FM? And I said, why are you doing that? Why are you, as Simon, uh, or rather, uh, as Seth Godin says, why are you waiting to be picked? Why don't you instead pick yourself and start your own podcast? And, he, and he's doing that now and, and loving it. And so if, if you decide this is something you want to dig into a little bit deeper, uh, as Jeff was saying, um, I, when we have Jeff to thank for this, uh, normally my Podcaster Academy course has been very limited to just 20 or 25 students at a, at a time. But Jeff wanted uh, many more people to be able to take advantage. And so we developed uh, a second uh, uh, course, a second level, just for this webinar. This has never been introduced or, or offered before. And, and we call it the undergrad level. And this is uh, the four uh, modules of the podcast, the remainder of module one, the 20 or 25 percent that uh, goes into covering the, the importance of the, of the podcast close and outro plus uh, the other uh, th three modules. Now, I'm going to show you how you can uh, make your listeners feel more like a real part of the conversation. Something's very key rather than somebody who's eavesdropping uh, on, on your podcast. Determine the kind of listener you're trying to reach and the best, uh, best methods for doing so effectively. Uh, we'll implement the uh, secrets of radio personalities don't want you to know. <laughs> uh, that's all in Module 2. and Module 3, we'll cover interviewing techniques and tips. Uh, you'll learn how to secure interviews from the key influencers uh, in your niche. Uh, prepare the best and most effective questions. Uh, know how and when to ask great follow-up questions, listen effectively, which is a grossly underrated skill, <laughs> uh, leverage the help of your guest and their network when their, ep when their episode goes live, uh, and a lot more. And then Module 4 uh, will cover monetization, where you'll learn the criteria I use uh, to, to determine which sponsors are right for my podcast and who can be right for yours, uh, the methods I use to gauge their interest and how you can too, uh, the presentation-based proposal I created to make uh, make my case. I give you the template so you can customize it. How to determine what to ask for from advertisers, what they'll expect from you, um, and and also just what I think is even more exciting than than sponsor-driven monetization because that's that's much harder uh, among the two options. And that's indirect monetization, where uh, much like uh, many bloggers do, where you're creating products and services for your listeners, and your podcast becomes the marketing funnel uh, uh, to those things. Uh, in addition to the four modules, of course, uh, uh, and this may not be obvious, I should say, um, rather than you know a digital download, this is a live classroom virtual setting. So they're taught live each Thursday, in this case, in June, 8 p.m. Eastern, so you have the benefit of being able to ask questions live and in the moment like we're doing here today. Um, and recordings available, you know, just like today, if, if you're not able to be there uh, live, uh, you still get the benefit of the questions the other students asked, even if you're not able to be there. Uh, and this also includes uh, all my interview uh, rundown, my interview templates that I use for guests, and obviously very helpful if you intend doing an interview-driven podcast, but helpful even if you don't in sort of just mapping this whole thing out. My email templates that I use to correspond with potential co-hosts and guests, ones that work, ones that I found that uh, get the job done and get it uh, done very succinctly, email follow-up templates uh, that have increased the likelihood that my guests will share my episodes by 80%, the increase the likelihood that they'll share it with their network, my sponsorship templates, as I mentioned, and also uh, some supplemental mind maps as well that, that uh, really aid you in, in helping, uh, helping you digest the material. In fact, those of you who uh, shared this webinar via social media unlocked one of those uh, mind maps as, as, a, as a free gift just, just for doing that. And so when you take all that together, uh, you've got the four modules, which again is the remainder of, of today, plus three more, taught live, recordings available, all the templates, the supplemental mind maps as well. Undergrad level is at 297. Registration is open through Thursday night at midnight, and the first class kicks off on Thursday, June the 5th. That's Thursday, June the 5th. Now, if you want to go deeper still, there's what we call the graduate level course, which is everything you just saw plus 
four 30-minute one-on-one coaching sessions, coaching calls with me. Uh, a call each week during the course, and we'll do uh, show critiques, and I'll sit down like your talent coach and help you refine what you're doing. This is if you've already launched your podcast. We'll take it apart, put it back together again. You'll have to grow some really thick skin in the process. Uh, if you've uh, yet to launch your podcast, we can talk about things like equipment options, setup, launch strategy, artwork options, brand strategy, publication, basically anything you want to talk about. But this level, because of the one-on-one coaching specifically, is limited to the first 25 signups. Now, I don't know how many people we have in the room uh, right now. I, I can't see that at the moment. But uh, almost 600 people signed up for, for this webinar. And so I don't expect those uh, to last a really, really long time, just so you know. Uh, the other, again, the undergraduate level, that's unlimited. But the graduate level has to be limited to 25 students because of the one-on-one coaching, obviously. And that level comes in uh, at 597. However, uh, that's, that was going to be the new June um, um, price level. Uh, but Jeff's a very shrewd negotiator, so we've we've, we've turned <laughs> back. The, down. <laughs> we've turned the clock back to uh, where the price level was for this particular uh, graduate level course to uh, uh, four ninety seven, what it was in April. And so that's uh, just for this community. In fact, this entire uh, both of these levels, this new level, and then this recurring level uh, and the price drop are being offered to Jeff's community on this webinar only. One of the things I wanted to make sure I did out of, out of respect for Jeff and out of respect for you is, you know, normally this close to uh, the launch of the next uh, iteration of the course, I've already got the course filled or nearly filled, but I have purposefully left, left each position in this graduate level course open just for today. So every single spot is open right now. But you got to act fast because, like I said, there's uh, several hundred people who have uh, decided to participate in this in this webinar today. Um, yeah. So just uh, I'm gonna jump in here real quick. Sorry, Jeff. Um, uh, I just wanted to uh, emphasize that um, uh, after this call, Jeff's gonna send out you know a replay um, you know uh, of of this webinar for anybody who might not have catched it to you know caught it uh, for everybody who registered. Uh, to all those 600 people, so um, as soon as that goes out, you know, people are going to listen to that and find, see that opportunity, and you know, those who want to are going to sign up. So those who are listening right now have a great opportunity to jump in. And I just want to emphasize two things. One, uh, Jeff's generosity in basically teaching the content. He just taught you part of the first module. So if if this content was resonating, then you know, um, there's uh, you know, there's there's good. Uh, there's a good chance that you're gonna like the rest of the course because he's basically just, you know, given you a free sample of it. Mm. Secondly, I just don't know of any other opportunity for, um, you know, this kind of money, which I know is 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 not, you know, a small amount of money, but I don't know where else you're gonna get one-on-one -on -one coaching from a seasoned uh, radio professional who spent 25 years, 26 years rather, in the business, who's gonna walk you through how to not only launch your podcast but have um, a successful one. Um, I just think it's hmm. uh, a great deal. I really appreciate you providing the discount just for uh, members of my community, Jeff. Um, I'm really grateful for uh, this teaching. I encourage you guys to sign up. Uh, I do want to sweeten the deal just because I really believe in, in what Jeff's doing. And like I said, I've benefited and am benefiting from it. I'm trying to apply some of the things that he's been teaching. Um, <laughs> Uh, so for anybody who signs up, because Jeff's uh, podcast is about reading. It's called Read to Lead. It's a great, very specific mm. podcast about how uh, leaders are readers and, you know, readers can become leaders. Um, I have an audio book uh, that I'd love to give away to everybody who signs up for either level of, of the course. We can just put it, you know, in, in, the, uh, in the bonuses section or somewhere in, in the course, Jeff, where you think people can have access to it. Mm -hmm. But anybody who signs up uh, through this call... Um, I'd love to give you a copy, uh, an audio copy of my book, You Are a Writer, which is about how to build an online platform and how to use your words to uh, build an audience. Um, I'd love to include that. That's something that hasn't been published elsewhere, and so it's basically an exclusive bonus that I'm figuring out, you know, what, where I want to publish it and how, and you get an advanced version of it. 
Um, so I want to include that just because I'm grateful to, to Jeff and I'm grateful for all of you guys for tuning in. If you do sign up for it, that's a, that's a bonus that you're going to get along with all the other great stuff he's going to offer you. Yeah, and you know this graduate level uh, edition of the course um, actually gets a little bit sweeter. I, I didn't mention that earlier. I almost forgot about it, and uh, this is, uh, uh, I think, uh, going to make it even more attractive to you, um, and that's if uh, you're able to sign up for that level of the course instead of by, by Thursday at midnight Eastern, if you're able to sign up by, by tomorrow night at midnight Eastern, I'm actually going to add uh, two additional 30-minute uh, coaching calls uh, to the deal. Uh, and I should mention, too, uh, that the place where all this happens is podcasteracademy.com slash register, podcasteracademy.com slash register. I had it set up to uh, show up uh, immediately, immediately below the video where you could just click on a button, Jeff, but uh, uh, technology as it is uh, doesn't seem to be working. So I threw in this slide at the last minute while you were talking. <laughs> Thanks for being transparent. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and email this stuff to you guys. But like I said, you know, once that email goes out, 600 people are going to be clicking that link. And you know, especially if you want to sign up for the graduate level, that premium version where you get uh, exclusive coaching from Jeff, and you even get bonus coaching if you do it in the next 24 hours. Um, uh, you know, you're gonna you're gonna um, you can sign up and, and get that, but you want to want to get that quickly. Also, um, whatever membership level you sign up for, you're going to get uh, a copy of my uh, audio book, which you can listen to, uh, you know, want this wonderful, sultry voice um, some more. Uh, Jeff, do you want to answer some questions? I know we've got some folks on the line yeah. who might have some, some questions. Uh, somebody, uh, one person said, this is kind of funny, Janet says, Jeff Brown, your podcast title is Wicked Long. <laughs> do, do you name names for SEO purposes? She's referring to, if you look at the name, the, the official name of my podcast in iTunes, it says read to lead podcast and then comma or dash and then it lists uh, some uh, names of guests that I, and in fact yours is included here Jeff, uh, names of guests that I've had on my podcast and, and yes that is for SEO purposes. If you know Jeff's got a new podcast out, if somebody's going to look for Jeff's podcast they, they might not know the name of it and just enter Jeff Goins, well his podcast will pop up in the search but guess what? Mine will pop up right next to it, and they can come to me and also hear uh, an interview that I did with Jeff in episode four. So yes, that is for for episode per, or uh, rather uh, SEO purposes. You're stealing my listeners, Jeff. <laughs> no, no, not not <laughs> hey, there's it's not a zero sum game. There's plenty right. of plenty of love to go around. Hey, I did want to mention, Jeff, uh, in case people were wondering, I noticed that you have uh, payment plans for um for for the course. Do you want to talk about that? Um, just in case folks are interested in that. Uh, sure, sure. I, I, in fact, I just added that this morning, as a matter of fact. Um, <laughs> I, I mentioned the 297 undergraduate level, the, the 497, the discounted uh, graduate level. And that actually, I should have mentioned this too, Jeff, that, that discount has already uh, been instituted on the site. So you don't have to enter any special code to get that $100 off that we talked about. It's already uh, been put in there. Uh, but if you do want to space that out, uh, you can do that by simply, uh, once you click through to either level, and you see the rundown and the add to your cart button or the buy now button. If you scroll down just a little below that, uh, you'll see that uh, you can space those those payments out over the course of the next uh, several months at, at simply ninety seven dollars a month uh, via PayPal. So that that makes it a little bit more easy for you if you're, if you're on a tight budget and and want to uh, want to want to go that route. Uh, more than more than happy to accommodate that as best we can. Cool. Uh, let's see. Um, I plan on launching my podcast. This is from Robert. I plan on launching my podcast no later than this fall. My worldview uh, in, is in interviewing business people with a heart for world missions. Right now, I'm debating hosting with Libsyn or SoundCloud for hosting your thoughts. Yeah, great question. Um, Libsyn, which is short for Liberated Syndication, Libsyn.com, L-I-B-S-Y-N.com is where a lot of podcasters host uh, their audio files. Libsyn is great for that. And for as little as $5 a month, they will host your audio for you. You don't want to do that on your own website because as people come to your podcast and traffic increases on your website, that could shut your website down. Uh, so uh, you need uh, somebody like a Libsyn to do that for you. A uh, SoundCloud is gaining in popularity uh, and is, is trying to reach out specifically to podcasters. As a host, I would be very careful, regardless of which route you go, Robert, in making sure that you control the RSS feed. Uh, SoundCloud uh, has an option where they can set that up for you. Well, if something ever happens to SoundCloud, then you know redirecting your feed becomes really, really difficult. Again, I don't want to get too technical, uh, but I go with Libsyn for that reason personally. 
but SoundCloud does offer an option where you can incorporate your own feed. You know, for me, that's uh, you know my my domain name plus podcast plus feed or whatever it is. But that way, I control it. You need to control that, uh, regardless of which uh, which route you take. And couldn't you do both, Jeff? I mean, I know some podcasters are using SoundCloud sort of as a distribution network where they're you know they're uploading their stuff to Libsyn uh, and publishing you know that on their blog, but then they're using you know SoundCloud, which is kind of like a, another iTunes basically, uh, and it has a lot of radio shows on it too. And they're using they're putting they're uploading it there too to get you know more distribution. Yeah, and that's exactly what I do. And okay. so uh, Libsyn uh, is is my main home, but then I manually um, upload uh, each episode. I'm not always del- as Oh, sorry, the dogs are barking. Yeah. <laughs> not, always, not always as intentional about it or uh, as quick about it as, uh, as I like to be. Yeah. Uh, but I do. I use SoundCloud as well. I just don't uh, run my uh, my syndication through SoundCloud. My sure. my podcast is syndicated through Libsyn. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Gene wants to know what type of equipment do I need to produce a podcast? This runs the gamut. Uh, this can be really expensive, or this can be really just uh, you know, real simple. It can be as uh, simple as an app on your phone or on your iPad, like a Boss Jock or Spreaker. Uh, one of those two uh, work really well. Or I mean, it, depending on what your budget is, you can uh, you can spend fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars on a microphone and mixer and and, and equipment and all that. Uh, so it really is possible though to do it on on a budget. Uh, you can find a really strong, solid microphone for as little as. 30, 40, uh, 50 bucks, uh, and, it's, it, and it sounds great. You don't have to spend three or four hundred dollars on on a microphone like some podcasters do. Now, at the same time, it's important that you know you're lowering as many barriers to entry on your podcast as possible. I hear so many that just sound awful and they're just so hard to listen to. The content might be fantastic, but it's painful almost to get through. You want to do you know at least enough that your podcast isn't a painful experience. So you've got to figure out what's right for you. I can certainly help you with that. Uh, you know, if you're if uh, you know if you're part of the course, I'm more than happy to walk you through that. But at the same time, there are plenty of free resources out there. I would start with the one that Jeff shared in the email he sent out to invite you on on this uh, webinar. Um, there was a, a link to uh, a set of, a set of six videos that uh, Pat Flynn did a while back, where he kind of takes you through step by step on on the equipment and what might be right for you. Go back to that email and click on that link, and and that will uh, answer the question more thoroughly uh, than I'm able to do here in the few minutes that we have. Jeff, I just saw a question come in uh, through uh, Google Plus. Somebody said, "What brand mics are in the thirty to fifty dollar range?" Do you have any brands that you can? Yeah, pick there's. Uh, if you'll search um, like on Amazon for ATR twenty one hundred, um, I they've gone up recently. They might be closer to the fifty range uh, now, but the ATR twenty one hundred, and I think there's an ATR uh, twenty seven hundred that's relatively new as well, and those sound really really good uh, uh, for for the price. You know, I have a Heil PR forty, which is a broadcast quality uh, microphone. Um, but uh, you don't have to have something that uh, you know expensive to, to to get the job done. Yeah, I just saw a Behringer. It's a condenser mic. I don't know. I don't know if that would work for um, podcasting. It's forty-two dollars. It's on sale on Amazon. There you go. I, I'm not. I'm not um, uh, familiar, or I've not ever used one of those, so I can't. I can't uh, speak to it. Uh, but um, uh, certainly, uh, you know, uh, you're not. Uh, mortgaging the house for that one, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, and it looks like, uh, you know, Blue, they do they do like the Blue Yeti. It looks like they've got a, a, a another a $40 podcast mic too. Uh, so there's definitely, I mean, you can definitely find them. Uh, you know what I would recommend doing um, regarding this, because the gear did sort of, you know, uh, prohibit me from doing it for a while. It just felt sort of overwhelming. Um, but what I would recommend doing is is two things. One make some sort of investment. You know, if you can afford $30 or, you know, $5 or whatever, I mean, you can, you know, buy a $20 pair of Apple headphones for your Mac that sound pretty good, you know, if you just hold it right and, and don't uh, let it rub up against your shirt or something. Uh, make some kind of investment so that you've got some skin in the game so that you actually use it. I mean, when I bought a, a microphone, you know, I didn't, I didn't spend invest that $1,500, but I invested, you know, a little bit of money so that I had a mic that made me sound better than average, and that made me want to use it versus, you know, not having anything invested in it. Um, and then the second thing I would say is just get started, 
and keep improving it. You mentioned Pat Flynn, Jeff. I was talking to him recently about my you know, recent podcast, and I was just like, man, like your audio quality sounds awesome, and I am not there yet. Mm. And I I want to get there. And he said he said uh, I said I said we're you know we're doing okay, but you know I'm not uh, SPI excellent yet. You know, smart, <laughs> smart passive income is the name of Pat's uh, uh, podcast. And he said that's okay because when I started, I wasn't SPI excellent either. I just got started and improved as I went. And you'll get better. And so I, I think it's important that you know get a little bit of skin in the game, whatever that means for you, thirty dollars or three hundred or whatever. Um, and then just start and improve as you go. I don't know of any other way to, to get better. For a year, I thought about podcasting, and all that thinking didn't make the show any better. But now that we've launched, uh, every episode I'm trying to get better because I've got skin in the game, and, and we're actually doing it as opposed to thinking about it. Uh, let's see, another question. Uh, what editing software do you recommend, particularly now that GarageBand seems to have moved away from supporting podcasting? I'm not sure what would be easiest. Uh, a couple of options there. One really popular free option for podcasters is a program called Audacity. Uh, just search Audacity uh, online and you'll find that pretty easily. And that's a free uh, ed audio editing software that a lot of podcasters use. I use uh, one that's um, a little bit more expensive than free. Uh, it's it's a subscription model, uh, Adobe Audition, part of the Adobe Suite. I think you can get everything in the Adobe Suite for about 50 bucks a month, but I actually only use Adobe Audition. So for a one-off like that, I think they charge $20 a month. But I used Adobe Audition in radio for 10 or 15 years. And so when it came to podcasting, that made the most sense for me because that's what I was comfortable with. That's what I used. Uh, somebody wanted to know, uh, hey, how do I sign up for this? Uh, how do we, a couple of folks, uh, it's on the screen now, podcasteracademy.com slash register, podcasteracademy.com slash register, and you'll see uh, the options there. Uh, let's see, what are the three questions that you mentioned that you uh, ask every guest? Uh, well, uh, for, for my podcast, you know, it may be unique. This may not apply to uh, you know, what you're ultimately doing. But I start off by asking them about the single greatest leadership lesson they ever learned. If they could narrow every lesson they learned down to a single thought or idea, what advice would you give is one of the questions, since it is, after all, the Read to Lead podcast. And, and sort of uh, continuing that theme, um, I ask them, um, you know, what are a couple of great books they've read in the last a year or two uh, that has had a, a huge impact on them and, and maybe sure why or how it impacted them as they did. Uh, and then finally, I ask, uh, you know, you've, you've had a chance, Jeff, to impact a lot of people with your work. Uh, at the end of the day, what do you hope your legacy uh, to be? So, so those are the three questions I end up asking every guest uh, on my show, and you can adapt those uh, for your own use certainly as well. But I didn't always ask those. Like I said, those that's something that sort of came about from doing doing the show again and again and again. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, not stealing listeners. You are both on my must listen list each week. Okay. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. I'm just kidding. big pie. I get it. <laughs> Uh, uh, see, uh, Delana says, thanks for the pearls of wisdom you shared today. Um, uh, what kind of product produced this podcast, uh, says Wendy. Um, I don't know if she's talking about the webinar or... I guess so, yeah. Um, that would be a webinar ignition, uh, if, if that's what you're referring to. Um, webinar ignition. Um, let's see... Monetization. How is Read to Lead generating revenue? Uh, well, a couple of different ways. Uh, my Read to Lead podcast, I started off uh, going uh, after seeking um, sponsorships. And so um, one of the things I did that a lot of, I don't think a lot of podcasters do, Jeff, is at the very beginning of my journey, I, I knew that uh, down the road that, that, that sponsors, uh, which is the harder of the two as far as direct and indirect monetization goes. When I say sponsors, I mean direct monetization. But I knew that someday, you know, I wanted to strive for that. I wanted to reach for that goal. And so what I decided to do was is to include a sponsor in my show at the beginning, from the beginning of my, my podcast journey. Uh, because when it came time that I had, you know, quote, unquote, real sponsors, 
I didn't want to have this huge change in the flow of the beginning of my podcast. I wanted that to always be a part rather than not having it and then adding it and having it disrupt the flow. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so um, what I did in the very beginning, um, I was already you know, doing some side gigs as a, uh, developing websites and, and mobile apps for small businesses uh, as part of a, a side business that I was running called Brown Nose Media. And Brown Nose Media was a sponsor on the first several episodes of my podcast. And I got work, uh, mobile app and website work, from being my own sponsor. Um, and so that's, that's one way. I've had um, uh, the Snippet app, which I know, Jeff, you're familiar with, uh, Matt Gartland over there and the folks yeah. at Snippet. Uh, you've, you've produced some content for the Snippet app, which is a mm. special reading app. They cool. have sponsored episodes of my podcast. I reached out to them. I heard about the app through Pat Flynn, and I, I saw it, and I thought, there's a perfect marriage here, and they agreed. Mm -hmm. And I, I sent them a proposal, and uh, in a few weeks, they were sponsoring episodes of my podcast. Um, Affiliate sponsorships uh, is a great thing uh, too, and that's a pretty easy thing to accomplish. Uh, you know, for a podcast like mine, um, Amazon. I'm an Amazon affiliate. I'm an Audible.com affiliate. Uh, you know, uh, for obvious reasons, it's a reading-driven podcast. Uh, Blinkist is another app um, uh, that uh, produces um, uh, book summaries for specifically business books, and I had an affiliate relationship with them. And so we've partnered uh, uh, for both of us and, our, and, our, and my listeners to, to uh, uh, benefit from that. It's really uh, affiliate sponsorships are really win, win, win scenarios. And so I introduce new people to Blinkist, which is a win for them. Uh, uh, they pay me a commission, which is a win for me. But I also arrange for them to share um, an opportunity to sign up for Blinkist at a discount, which wouldn't be available any other way. And so... It, it really is a win-win-win for all parties involved. And so those are just some of the ways. Um, I've actually uh, even had uh, sponsors uh, approach me unsolicited, even folks I didn't even know existed, who said, hey, we like what you do. We want to advertise on your show. You know, what does that look like? How do we go about it? And so um, a, lot of different, a lot of different ways to do that uh, indirectly and directly. But my favorite is, is indirect monetization. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Um, very insightful presentation. Thanks to Jeff and Jeff. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I think that I think I think that's most of them, Jeff. Great. Yeah, that's all I got over here. Um, yeah, I think this is great, Jeff. Well, thank you. It was a pleasure uh, being on with you today. And again, I just want to let folks know uh, that if you if you liked what you saw, if you want to dig deeper, if you're really serious about a podcast uh, that makes a difference, uh, whether it's one you've already started or whether it's one you, you hope to start. I uh, hope you'll uh, at least check it out, podcasteracademy.com slash, re uh, slash register. And any questions you can direct to me, info at podcasteracademy.com. I'll be happy uh, uh, to answer those uh, for you. Yeah, well, thank you, Jeff. Um, thank you for all the all the bonuses, the great deal you, you're offering. Again, I want to remind folks there's there's two levels that you could sign up for: the undergrad and, and graduate level of Podcaster Academy. Uh, I'm a student there. I recommend it. Uh, you know, for the undergraduate level, you're going to get a lot of great teaching, just like this, just more in depth, and you'll get an opportunity to interact with Jeff and you know more of a, a group setting. And if you want one-on-one -on -one coaching, you know, I would definitely recommend that graduate level. Just remember there are, are limited spots for that, and if you sign up uh, within the next 24 hours, is that right? Um, you get two extra coaching calls with you. That's right. And that, within uh, about the next 36 hours, yeah, All midnight right. cool. uh, Eastern tomorrow night. Yeah, Great. So uh, I would encourage you guys to check that out. Thanks so much, Jeff. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Uh, I learned some stuff. I, I've got that uh, little you know series of questions I'm going to ask and, mm -hmm. and work that into my next open. Um, and uh, for everybody who registered for this, um, we're going to send you that that list of questions the 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 uh the questions that 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 you ask at the beginning um the the what's in it for me um walk through right Jeff we're going to send that out as a worksheet Absolutely. great well i am tongue tied apparently but uh, thanks everybody <laughs> have a, have a great day and um talk to you later